Good morning, folks. You're looking at plasma filament activity increasing on the sun just as it did in 2009 and 2010 when the last sunspot maximum was about to click in. We'll go from weather to deep space today, starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours and 193 angstrom still shows the southern coronal hole most prominently. Its solar wind is on the way to Earth tomorrow or Monday, and in the interim we've got the telemetry of the stream in entirely calm, quiet range, leaving the magnetosphere calm and awaiting that more intensified stream. Quick note in Yemen, this week the flooding hit the region and it was brutal. At least four are dead, and cleanup is ongoing. Two notes here for the United States. While the storms around the spinning low will be easy to see, its northward shift also yanks tropical heat northward and will have major summer-like weather in the southeast today. Heat follows it all the way north. Our aesthetic piece today comes from Copernicus, Sentinel, the satellite taking high detail looks at Vietnam from orbit and able to see fine, macro-level details that can prove to be essential information for the farmers on the ground. The satellite did the same for various U.S. crops across the country earlier in the year, you might remember, and today we are on the opposite side of the world. Well, folks, now we're off to Alma, snapping a shot of something they believe is 11 billion light years away. They can tell the image is warped and curved by the space between us and it, and in deconstructing the stretch and curvature, they say the real object looks like this, and that it's one of the early examples of an active galactic nucleus outburst a galactic superwave. The Taurus jet model hits again, and this time as far away as they can probably hope to spot one with this much detail. The large-scale setup of the galaxy is plasma cosmology science, and the implications of the event for that galaxy all those years ago would be cataclysmic from an X-ray and cosmic ray perspective. Up next, we'll let Hubble focus on a much, much closer NGC 4618. It is a special galaxy in that its spiral has only one arm, at least if you're looking in this close. Because when you zoom out to see both her and her sister system, NGC 4625, we can see that the furthest reaches of the arms are very diffuse, but both of these sisters appear to have two if you go out far enough. Also interesting is the clear plasma level interaction between the two. It's not light contamination making the center appear brighter here and it's not data processing. It's the fact that there's a plasma bridge between them, and it's glowing in ionized hydrogen halos vastly larger than the galaxies themselves. And speaking of the halos, number of emails came in yesterday from folks who want to know a bit more on yesterday's debunking of dark matter interpretations of the 3.5 keV return line from space. That halo you see around the center of the galaxy should be there if dark matter is real, but they don't see it. The massive, but nearly impossible to see halos around the galaxies are normal, real matter. We just saw one with NGC 4618. They are in those outer regions, and they reconcile the galactic dynamics without dark matter. Now last but not least, folks, how will we know that our ozone is taking the brunt of the magnetic reversal and has become dangerous? Well, this is how. The trees and other plants will begin to show it. Things like this make that fake story about excess UVB and UVC light already coming in very easy to debunk, because when you see what happens, you realize that we're nowhere near this yet. And folks, this is not a time sequence of one pine cone. This is many pine cones showing the various effects of varying levels of radioactivity. These reproductive vessels of the plant under increasing radiation show just how bad things will get. They also work the same for pollen samples irradiated with UV. Now folks, by the time we get here with the plants, everyone on Earth should probably know the drill already, because we all sit under the same sky and when the loss of the field crosses that threshold, photokeratitis burns on the skin and eyes will let us all know that something has really changed with the ozone. It's changing now. Earth is now likely down about 10 to 25 percent in the magnetic field compared to 150 years ago, and ozone destroying solar protons are about to make a return with the sunspot cycle as the magnetic field weakens more by the day and allows more ozone destruction. A glimpse of the future already in progress. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.